Um, I'm going to Liz Carr now. She's an acclaimed actor and comedian. She has just finished the fourth series as Clarissa Mullery in the BBC drama Silent Witness. Her new work, Assisted Suicide, the musical, will be shown in 2016 at the South Bank Centre. And she is in the biography, longer version of what I've just said. So what I've asked the people to do is sort of to talk to up to five minutes on the panel, and then we're opening it to the audience. Okay. Um, well, good morning, good afternoon, we, I think we've moved into. Uh, there's lots of things to say, of course. I'm going to do a bit of good news stuff and bad news stuff, I think. So I think we need a bit of good stuff as well. Um, but I thought it was interesting, a, a really um, interesting piece from Samuel West there, uh, that he couldn't be here because he was at an audition, or not an audition, but he had work. And that felt really crucial to me, because one of the experiences I have as a disabled performer, and in this case as an actor, is that in four years of doing uh, Silent Witness, three that have actually been on TV, um, I've only had one other audition. So I'm fairly high profile. Um, I'm in a BBC One drama, and I've had one other audition. Only this year did I get a decent agent. In fact, and for a long time, I couldn't get an agent. So this is, so we're going to talk today about lots of different things about this world and, and representation, but at its very core, just getting the education, just getting in there, getting seen for auditions, getting an agent is massive. And I would, he talked about Act for Change, absolutely, which links all the different groups. This is not just about disability, this is about race and age and sexuality and all of the other groups of people who are finding it hard to be represented on TV or in any kind of media. So um, being in Silent Witness is, uh, it's a job. Let me just say that as well. It, don't get me wrong, I know I'm incredibly lucky. Incredibly lucky to be in the position that I'm in. But I'd also like to say, and I don't know, I'm probably preaching to the converted, that it, it, is, it's gone quiet. it is also just a job. And what I mean by that is on a daily basis in the world of acting, I face as much discrimination as I have done in any other job that I've done as a disabled person. Because you are probably going to be the only person, the only disabled person in that work environment. So whether you work in an office, or whether you work out in the community, whatever it is that you do, the discrimination you may experience as a disabled person is rife in all of those environments. And of course, TV is no different. And, and a very, if, if there's anyone here who's a friend of mine on Facebook, they'll know at its very basic, something that happened to me last week, because we've just finished, as he said, um, we've just finished filming, is that the rap do for Silent Witness was not accessible. Okay. It was in their view. And what accessible meant to them was we're going to hire a nine foot ramp, and because there's two steps, and we can use that, and then there's another two steps, so we'll move the ramp. Lovely. Don't get me wrong. They, and they were also being lovely about it. We've done this for you. And you're going, but for me, you should have made it accessible. But they thought they had. So what, you know, what we need when we're in those jobs, the day for me begins, I have to be there in makeup at half six in the morning and we finish at half seven at night and there's very little room for reasonable adjustment. There should be, but you know that if you start to go, actually, I can't do that, then you have to think about your own compromises. Can you do, can, can you do that? Can you not do that? How much do you say? I'm assertive. <laughs> I'm very assertive, I think. I've been involved in a lot of these campaigns and, and I don't hesitate to handcuff myself to anything, really, if it needs doing. In fact, I quite enjoy it. So that's fine. But, but you know, when it comes to it, I still make choices about whether to say what my needs are. Like we were just talking, there was a photo shoot last night for Silent Witness, and I fought for that. Like, I've been there four years and I'm finally in the main shots with the rest of the cast. 
I should be, because when you think about Silent Witness, you now include my character. But I've had to fight to be in the credits at the beginning of the, of the show, which I've got, yes. I've had to fight to be in the press um, and all of that. Anyway, so we were filming last night, and it was about 7 o'clock last night, and Clarissa was wearing a little top with sleeveless with just a jacket, okay? And we were, we were on an estate in Ealing, and, and it was all kind of, it was like it was a crime scene, all right? I was fucking freezing, <laughs> freezing. But I thought, you know what, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to be trouble. I thought that. Handcuff woman, bolchy woman, confident woman, thought, because they never take me out of the lab as Clarissa in Silent Witness. And part of that's because of the, the hassle of going on location with a wheelchair user. They worry about that. And when they do do it, they go over the top. So if they need an accessible toilet, they give me about three. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm fine. I cannot, you know, I know what I need, and I would tell you. They don't ask, so they overdo it. So then, of course, they, now they, of course, think that they need three toilets every time I go on location. <laughs> so, of course, they're never going to take me on location. So I'm thinking, well, I'm cold. What am I going to do? Do I tell them that I'm cold? Because so then they might think I'm high maintenance. And I'd like to at least leave the lab next year if I go back. <laughs> Assertive me thinks about all of this. It's a job. Do you, but do you know what I mean? That, that the compromise, that, that this work environment is tough. It's really hard. So this is not at all to deter people, because things like this will only improve the more people. I mean, Lisa Hammond, who's, who's here today, we've seen her, and she's been referred to, is, is at place Donna in EastEnders, and also Helen in Vera. And, you know, we've become the best of friends, because we need to, t we need to natter and gossip and get strategies. Because it's a whole new group. The more of us that are in TV and get these roles, the more of us that need to make it better for those of us once we are in there. So it's sort of, it's a different world now. And that's progress, actually. That is wonderful progress. So this is the good news, too. Is that in the past, we've been talking about how to get there. Now we're not just talking about how to get there. We're talking about what happens when we're there. Because it's hard when you're there as well. It's no dream job. It's a brilliant job, and I'm very fortunate, but it's hard. I did say that I was cold, by the way. I did, because in the end, I couldn't feel my arms. And actually, the makeup woman said, you look very pale. I'm like, yes, because she's plastering more shite on my face, I'll be honest. Nobody told me there'd be so much makeup in that world. Wow. Um, and it is also, you know, Richard began by talking about, uh, you know, the body beautiful. And it, it, that's also the world that we're in, in TV. And when I got the role of, of Clarissa in Silent Witness, I remember disabled people, friends of mine, with different bodies, like my own. I know how I look. I know that my, I don't just look like a, a, a non-disabled person sitting down. Yeah, I've been ill, absolutely, and I wear, I wear that in my body. And there were so many disabled people, friends of mine, who were so thrilled because it kind of gave them hope that... For a change, it isn't just people that look a certain way will be on TV. It's people that look like me and you and whoever. You don't have to look a certain way. That said, when I got the job, their concerns were my hair and my teeth. There you go. Hence, Clarissa wears a wig and teeth wears, well, I had to live with that, I'll be honest. Yeah? But it's about image as well. But to get, you know, you can't underestimate, to get a body that doesn't conform and doesn't look like what we're used to seeing on TV, not in a documentary, and not in a thing about benefit cuts, is massive. <laughs> so that's the other thing. Those of us that do get there, sometimes just existing and being there is enough. We still have to fight. We shouldn't put up with that. Some of the behavior that I've had to do and some of that compromising, I'm not saying that's the right way. Because then we have to fight. We have to fight for the storylines. I'm fighting for the storylines. I know that Lisa is always fighting for the storylines. And they'll say, but, you know, we, don't worry, we're not going to make the storyline about disability. They can't not. Mm -hmm. They think giving you a storyline about not about disability is, you know, that if you've got a romance, they think, well, we're giving you a love thing. But they'll always bring in the disability. They'll always make it that your partner's freaked out because you're a crip. 
But they think that's not about disability, because it's about romance. And of course, the angle they take on that has everything to do with impairment and everything to do with disability. And they can't do that. When I, I was trying to fight for a storyline once, and it was a hate crime, and Clarissa was going to get, she was going to try and get on a bus, was old Clarissa, right? And uh, the writer had written in that I wasn't allowed on the bus because there was a pram on there. And the, writers, and, and, and the producers were like, oh, that would never happen. <laughs> never, never happen. The writer happens to have a son who's a disabled person. He's a pretty good writer. He introduced my character. He gets it. He gets the nuances about disability. He doesn't overly do it. I'm just there and I'm doing my job. But he will not be frightened of referring to it. Brilliant, right? So, so, but the point was, is that Clarissa was wheeling somewhere and a gang hit upon her, okay? So getting on the bus was important, it was part of the story, but they, cu they cut that out. Okay, so they cut that out because that was not believable. And then uh, Clarissa was going to be hit on by this gang just because she was a disabled person, she was going to be robbed. And she was going to be pulled out of her chair. It was a hate crime. Horrific. They said, oh, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that because she's such a strong character that, you know, would the audience actually ever believe her being vulnerable? How would we ever make her strong again after showing her as vulnerable and damaged? So they said, what about instead, instead of having the gang do this, what if she fell out of her chair? What if she fell off a curb? Because, of course, that would make me look great, wouldn't it? <laughs> That would give me great credibility as a disabled person, as a wheelchair user, a permanent wheelchair user, because that never happens to me. But they thought that was more realistic and better. So the writer pulled the story. I was gutted, because I get the script and there's nothing. There I am, analysing more fucking DNA. Right, there I go. One day I'll see the sunshine. Right? One day I'll have a life. My biog on Silent Witness website says we know nothing about her private life. It's not because she's a mystery, it's because they don't know how to write it. It really is that. And it's changing. So my advice or other things that I want to say are absolutely, it's amazing. We have more and more disabled people on TV. Now let's also look at what happens once we're there. The writers can help, the producers this afternoon. I look forward to, to hearing how all that combines. So. Thank you very much for listening. I know I've run over my time. Thank you. Thank you. I think you're allowed to go over your time. <laughs> um, now we're going to, I'm going to Danny. Danny Sapani is also an acclaimed actor. He played Macbeth in an award-winning production. He played the lead role of Ephraim in Moon on a Rainbow Shawl at the National Theatre. You may have seen him. Jason in Medea with Helen McCrory, and he has just wrapped in Jadotville in South Africa, opposite Jamie Dorman and Mark Strong. Mark Strong is one of the people who sent his apologies, because many, many actors who used to be involved with us in the One in Eight group in the 90s, we invited them to come, and they were all acting all around the world. I know where they all are, and they all sent their apologies and their best wishes, and they're on a sheet in your pack. So... Danny, as a non-disabled person, is going to speak for five minutes, um, and then we're going to have Ewan, and if Jay comes, she's had to be at something this morning and she's coming a bit late, and then I was going to take um, Lisa from the floor first if she wants to speak. She doesn't have to. <laughs> okay, thank you. Danny. Hello, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I uh, am probably, well, I'm very honoured to be asked to speak at this event. Um, I think it's incredibly um, important. Um, and from the clips that we saw earlier and the conversations that I've had with um, actors uh, of all abilities and races of recent times, I was at the Act for Change um, event that happened at the National Theatre. Um, there is a long, long, long way to go. <laughs> we are not even beginning, really, to understand how to get past some of the really obvious um, portrayal,
traps, um, negative portrayal traps that we fall into, which I call the, the, the shorthand of, of, of drama, in that art being a representation of life um, has to, on some levels, deal with the shorthand. Um, and I find that when we're looking, certainly as Sam said in the video, you know, there is often more opportunity to go beyond the shorthand in theatre because there is less of a sort of financial